Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. reasonable except this is tapered looks like we've got a bunch of crap down on the bottom Okay, we're going to put just a little bit of oil on it. Boy, that sure helped. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go in with a bottom tap. And see if we can uh, get it to go in a little bit deeper. All right, so now we'll come in with a little cleaner. Yeah, just about what we're looking for. Let me go see if I okay, can find it. we a found bolt. ourselves a bolt. We'll slide that in here. Hey, Buster! Take it on down. Let's come in and with a hacksaw and take that off.
looks good. I think what we'll do is put it back in the lathe and go ahead and trim that down where it needs to be. All right, so we've got our nut there, or our bolt. Okay, so that's good for that. I think we got it down to pretty much what we want. Now we're going to come in and weld up that that little V. And I might just wait for Jason to come in so he could TIG weld it. And that would make it look really nice. So for now, that's what we got. Um, and here, I have it. Oh, it's tight. All right, let's see what we got. Because this thing is. No, it wasn't. Uh, it just wasn't tight. It just wasn't tight. So that's going to help. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'll tell you too. Okay, let's get up. that one so we need to just drop down and come back actually let's come back and recut that one okay well we're, we'll be cutting more later so drop down yeah and I'm I'm about done everything again. yeah it's a little afternoon is it okay how many we got left we we're just getting into the ones that barely cut Oh, I see. Okay. So, probably just out of these things, about five or six more. Yeah, oh, they're a mess. Yeah. Two, good, good. Yeah. It's still got an edge, but good. all right. Uh, we'll run a few more? Yeah.
Well, okay, we've got the shaft done. Uh, I welded, well, actually I had Jason weld because he's a much better welder than I am. I had him weld up that, and first I put a, uh, a, a 516 bolt down the center of the shaft, not the center, but off to the side, so that it would hold it from spinning. And then uh, he welded it, and we put the bearings on, and this thing is ready to rip. Uh, the splines were quite interesting. I always forget how difficult splines are. Uh, and I always bid it too low. But, you know, hey, whatever. This is Nick Collier, checking out. Well, hell's bells. That was a pathetic last few minutes of, uh, of the axle project. So uh, I thought I'd add this little bit to it and uh, at least get it up to maybe 15 minutes or so. Uh, first I want to show you uh, my new acquisition which is this, uh, this slip roll. I mean, uh, you know, I normally wouldn't have bought anything like this except it was like an old piece of American iron and uh, I just couldn't help myself. It was 200 bucks and not too bad. Uh, and uh, took a while to get it here. I'd say a couple of weeks. But uh, it's here and uh, I'll be able to make rings like this, uh, this wide or this wide. Uh, and that's, uh, that's got me excited. So, uh, what we're going to do is uh, kind of just walk around. Uh, well, actually, let's just go over to the big lathe. I'm going to tell you the story of the big lathe. Okay. Well, this lathe right now is kind of a mess. Uh, and in fact, the entire shop is a bit of a mess because uh, last week we went to, uh, to uh, a reception. Uh, seven artists and I got together and we uh, set up some time in a gallery to show our work and you've seen some of my paintings over <clears throat> over the last months um, and so I put my paintings in and we had this reception and there was a, just a ton of people and you know I've lived in this town 50 years so I knew a fair amount of them it was a great uh, social event uh, and I got COVID so I've been down for the entire week I mean literally flat on my back for three solid days and uh, you know my wife was like having to help me stand up and walk me to the bathroom it was pathetic but uh, you know I'm feeling better now and I'm not quite out of the woods but I am feeling better so uh, you know everything's good looking good so let's go back to this lathe here <clears throat> i've been looking for a larger lathe for uh, a while and i you know all i had at that time was the little south bend which is you know nine inches and i i needed something a little bit bigger and uh, so you know i kept looking in craigslist and looking on ebay and there was a couple of times where I almost got a piece on eBay but somebody outbid me and I'm glad they did because this one was going to show up at some point or another and uh, so I'm looking on Craigslist one day and this guy has this lathe for sale and I don't know the brand name or anything so uh, you know I, we shoot back a, a half a dozen emails and I say well I'm interested and, and he lives in Oakland, California, which is about three hours away uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I jump in my car and I drive down there to have a look at this lathe. And uh, he's got it in a big warehouse and it's all hooked up and everything. And he, he said he was using it. Um, and I turned the thing on and it just made a howling, horrible sound. And I, you know, I could go straight to the transmission and hear it. And I'm thinking, oh man, this thing is a piece of crap. But it had chucks, it had um, 
a steady rest, a follow rest. It had a bunch of equipment that came with it. And, uh, and I thought, well, it's worth giving it a try. And at the very least, if it doesn't work out, I can sell off all the equipment and at least pay double my money. So, uh, so, you know, he wanted $1,100 for it. I offered him a grand and he jumped at it. And I went, okay. So I go and get a U-Haul truck and I put this thing on a U-Haul truck and there, I couldn't put it in the center of the truck because I didn't have enough ropes and you know U-Hauls they've got these flimsy little uh, tie down things and this was a lot of weight so I brought it up against one side and I built some some uh, stra or uh, some 2 by 4s uh, to kind of make sure it just stayed in one place and I thought well okay that's good enough so uh, I got in the truck and I drove away and literally the truck this sits like this normally. I'm sitting, no, no, actually I'm sitting like this. This wheel is almost off the ground half of the time. And I'm driving down the road, you know, just cockeyed as hell, hoping that no cop's going to stop me because if they do, then I've got to figure out how to get this thing back to center. And no, nobody stopped me. I d drove down. I just took as many side streets and back streets and back alleys as possible and got out on the freeway and just kind of pluttered along going on the freeway real slow taking it easy and for some reason nobody stopped me and I got all the way to Nevada City and brought it out to the house and parked my truck and called my neighbor who has this pretty good sized backhoe and he said, yeah, I'll come over and help you get it off the truck. So he comes over and he drops, drives his backhoe up against the back of the truck and puts the bucket in the truck and we tie to the bucket and he picks the, the lathe up. Well, instead of picking the lathe up, the entire backhoe, and this is a big ass backhoe, the entire backhoe, the back wheels come off the ground. And he's like, whoa, this thing weighs a ton. So uh, we he had to just move in a little closer and grab it a little closer to the center and then he was able to grab it. Now he picks it up and he brings it around and this is before I had a, a wooden floor. I had dirt so he could just drive straight into the shop and he drove that tractor right into the shop and he literally dumped this thing over there. And, and I knew that I wanted to build a, a concrete platform for it and that was going to take some time so I did but uh, while it was over there I thought well hey let's just take it apart and see if it's possible that that uh, that we're gonna have uh, you know that we can rebuild the transmission. I'm looking, I'm the, hearing the transmission, it's just howling and I'm thinking well probably whatever's happened all of the gears are wiped out everything's gone so you know I'm preparing myself to sell off a bunch of parts. I take the tranny apart and the damn thing has, by the way 1954 communist Russia this is where it was made in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia? Yeah. Uh, and so, and by the way, the company is still active. So uh, I take it apart thinking, well, you know, it's a Russian built thing in the early 50s. It's going to have, you know, needle bearings everywhere. It's going to be just a pain in the ass. And it turns out that it didn't. It had all ball bearings and literally, and they had numbers on them. And I could go to the hardware store and for 300 bucks I bought a new set of bearings and put them in there. And I was like, wow, this is great. So, uh, 
But the problem was is that the instruction manual, and this thing came with a really nice instruction manual in Russian. <laughs> so all I could do was look at the pictures. And the pictures were pretty rough as it was. So I took it apart carefully and put it back together and put it in the machine. And we're talking about a transmission that probably weighed three, 350 pounds. So in and out was not an easy thing. And I did that nine times. And half of the time I'd just have a washer in backwards or something would be missing or something would be out of adjustment. And as soon as you turn it on, it's just, and it was like, ah, stop, stop, stop. So uh, nine times, took it apart, took it out, took it apart, put it back together, put it back in, and tried it out. And the ninth time was the lucky time. And I swear this thing has been running ever since. I've done almost nothing to it. This is Nick Collier, checking out.